one out. <laughs> Burn my thumb. There's a nice Clutina Red. Dinner. <laughs> Hello, my name's Scott McLean. I'm a fisheries biologist with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. And today we're here on the banks of the Clutina River to fish for sockeye salmon, also known as red salmon. It's a beautiful day, so let's go fishing. The Clutina River is a beautiful glacial fed tributary of the Copper River with fast water and a large run of sockeye salmon. The Clutina River sport fisheries can be accessed from several locations next to the Richardson Highway and old Richardson Highway bridges. At the Richardson Highway Bridge, the river can be accessed on the upstream side of the bridge within the highway right-of-way. There are parking areas at both ends of this bridge, but camping is not permitted. The land upstream of the Richardson Highway Bridge is primarily owned by the Otna Native Corporation, and access across these lands requires a permit from this corporation but there are 10 foot wide public easements to access the river. The downstream side of the Richardson Highway Bridge on the south bank of the Clutina River has a developed gravel road and parking area that is suitable for RV parking at the top near the highway. An undeveloped public boat launch can also be found here. As with the other parking sites, camping is not permitted at this site. However, several private campgrounds are located just downstream of the launch. There are 10 foot wide public easements as well on the downstream side. The Old Richardson Highway Bridge crosses the Clutina River near the community of Copper Center. Upstream of the bridge, there are private campgrounds on each bank of the river. Access to the river at these campgrounds are for their clients only. The majority of the land downstream of the bridge is private, but there are 10 foot wide public easements on the north bank for approximately a quarter mile and on the south bank from the bridge for approximately a mile all the way to the Copper River. The south bank trail crosses several side channels to access the Clutina River mouth, so hip boots might be necessary. Camping and fires are not allowed along these easements, and please be sure to pack out any trash. We recommend contacting a local ADF&G office in Glen Allen if you have specific questions about access in this area. So let's talk about some of the things you'll need. First of all, you'll want to have your Alaska sport fishing license on your person while you're fishing. And next we'll talk about a range of the rods and reels that commonly are used, typically seven to nine foot in length medium action rods. This one here, for example, is a seven foot with a spin cast reel. We also have a fly rod, nine foot, eight weight with monofilament on the reel. And some folks prefer to have a bait cast. This is an eight and a half foot medium action. This one has braided line. And the braided line has less resistance for its strength, has greater, I think, sensitivity. However, it can be more challenging to use. It likes to wrap around your rod tip or, you know, in between the, your lead. All of these reels should be able to accommodate 15 to 20 pound test line to help hold up to not only the abrasion in the river, but the fact that these fish typically range four to eight pounds and in the fast current, they can really pull on your line pretty hard and uh, give you a good, good fight. Next, we'll talk about what you need at the end of your line. Uh, some of the terminal tackle that's commonly used is these uh, Russian river flies or sockeye flies, coho flies. These are a long shank with a narrow hook gap. And then they're tied to the leader, which is typically two and a half to three feet or even longer. And of course you need a weight to keep that down along the bottom. So here there's an example of some surgical tubing with lead. Uh, this is a common method. Other methods for lead attachments, anything from split shots to kind of the slinky style. But it's another advantage of the surgical tubing is it has some stretch to it. And if your lead is caught in a snag, it'll slide out. The length of the lead is gonna be determined by what you find on your first cast, first several casts. I typically start with a inch, inch and a half piece of lead. And if it's drifting fast and you're not touching bottom, you will of course wanna go heavier. You want to just lightly tap the bottom of the river. And of course, if you have too much lead, you're going to be snagging, catching rocks. So you just simply grab your pliers, 
and work that little extra bit of lead off. Of course, keep the lead, pack your trash out. The ultimate goal is to get a nice even drift as you, after you cast, swing, flip your fly. You want it to just swing downstream, just lightly tapping all the way along. Another example is just simply yarn. This hook here is a three-aught size, octopus style. So I don't think what color matters too much, but most people use chartreuse or orange. It's just important to have that yarn on there to help control that drift. The yarn can be bought separately, and then once you tie your hook on, make an egg loop and just slide that yarn underneath the egg loop. And then here's a little variation on the lead. Uh, surgical tubing is slid onto the line before you tie your hook, and then the lead is just inserted in there. What that allows you an advantage of is sliding that lead to whatever length you find most effective. So you can make that adjustment without cutting your line. And then it also allows you to pull that off a rock if you get hung up. It releases much easier. Again, this is another three-odd hook. Just tie an egg loop there and pull it tight. So let's go fishing. So on the Clutina River, the sockeye run starts in early June and goes through mid to late July. Probably peak time is around third week in June. All right, we've got a red on. Oh, going for a run. Ouch, <laughs> burned my thumb. <laughs> Lots of fight in it. These are a blast. Oh boy, he's a fighter. I'm gonna pull him into the shallows here and check he's hooked in the mouth. The hook's in the mouth, so it's not a foul hook. We're gonna keep this one. Move the hook. There's a nice Clutina Red. Dinner. <laughs> so now I'm gonna cut the gills to bleed the fish out to improve the quality of the flesh. Stack a few rocks around to make a bit of a crib for it. And that way it'll continue to bleed out while I'm fishing. All right. I'm going to talk about the difference between a legally hooked salmon and a foul hooked salmon. Legally hooked is defined as being hooked in the mouth. The point of the hook has to originate from the inside of the mouth. Often they're in the corner of the mouth. That is the point of the hook goes into the mouth and then points outward. That's legal. Uh, sometimes down through the jaw, lower jaw or upper jaw, that's legally hooked. But anywhere outside the mouth is foul hooked. If that point originates from the outside, for example in the lower jaw and is hooked up through, that would be a foul hook. That fish would need to be released without taking it out of the water. The same thing if it were foul hooked in the fin or up in the dorsal or tail, some other part. That's all foul hook. Those fish must be released. And you want to make that determination before you remove them from the water and release back into the river. It really is a phenomenal fishery. The sockeye in this river put up a good fight. It's fast water. They're beautiful fish, great to eat. Got the view of the mountains, the wrangles. And there's relatively a good amount of elbow room on the river. You know, if you really want to work the river, there's plenty of access points. Let's go try and catch another one. What I like to look for is a fairly fast, uniform current along the shoreline where I don't typically go over my knees. Uh, the fish come in fairly close to the shore, a matter of three to ten feet off the shore swimming up in the areas where there's lower velocity. So using my left hand, I like to retrieve the line, take the slack out, and then I essentially shoot my line out into the river. We don't need to cast very far. Let it drift. Return just upstream. I like to keep my rod tip as close to the water as possible. So what I'm feeling for is just that light, light bounce off the rocks. I'm 
And a lot of times you'll pick up a fish right at the tail end of your swing. We're trying to essentially floss the fish with the fly. The fish have their mouth open a lot and the fly swings across and into their mouth. <laughs> That's why it's a good idea to wear eye protection. If I feel a sudden stop after doing this several times, you'll get a better feel for what's a rock and what, what'll be a fish. There's a fish. All right, now I'm gonna pull the fish in to confirm it's legally hooked. Can't tell where I've hooked it, somewhere in the head or mouth. And take a closer look here. This one's caught in the corner of the mouth. It's a sockeye. And we're gonna keep this one towards our bag limit. Gonna bonk it. Gonna bleed the fish by cutting the gills. And I'm gonna Place it in the crib with the other. That's how it's done. <laughs> As you can see, it's getting late. I'm done fishing for now, but I'm gonna take home these beautiful uh, Clutina Reds and give it a try and good luck.